Hello everyone, the Kentucky Patriot here. Uh, so glad to have you with us. Um, we're in Tennessee. We, we took a little vacation here right at Christmas time uh, with the family, a little getaway. Uh, I do apologize for not having more range videos. Hopefully we're gonna get, get back to the range real soon. It's been a busy time of year for us. But anyway, while we're driving, it's a beautiful day. It's cold, but beautiful here in the great state of Tennessee. Uh, I'd mentioned this in other videos and I had made one I think with my Jeep talking about uh, where to store a weapon and you know, like knives or we're not talking about you know just necessarily your carry your gun uh, but uh, other means of defense and people say well aren't you the guy that said the importance of consistent carry absolutely so this isn't taking place of your gun I'm not telling you not to carry a gun but let's just say you know for other options or there's times when you can't carry a gun let's say you're going to the airport now we just drive to Tennessee but when we go to the airport we have to go unarmed because I do not want to leave a gun uh, in, in my vehicle with ammo getting hot, whether it's cold or hot, regardless of the time of year. So the, the way I get around that is we do have to drive to the airport unarmed, me and my wife. Uh, but what we do is when we get on a plane, we go down to Florida, I, I do pack a holster with me, and then when I borrow a gun off my uncle, uh, I just borrow one of his, and I have a holster, I have a gun, I'm ready to roll. So there is a times whether you're going to a federal building or whatever the case may be well there's just times when you can't have a gun or maybe you're going to a uh, your your job and there, there there's places that you are absolutely not allowed to, to carry a gun if you work like at an oil refinery or certain certain big big companies uh, even if you uh, have a concealed carry permit you can't carry one in there if they find it in your car you can get fired on the spot so long story short i'm not telling you to let this take the place of your gun uh I would tell you to do this in addition to your gun. But if you are going somewhere where you can't carry a gun, this could sure come in handy. I, I've showed you different spots. Now on my uh, Jeep, I have a mesh, uh, uh, kind of like a little net that I can actually reach in and get the gun right through the net, the netting the way I've got it set up. And I've got a fixed blade hunting knife that, I'll, that, I, that I use for that. So I can literally, if something goes bad, I can reach down and pull it out. Uh, also under the seat and under the seat's a great place because you can carry a big knife a lot of times I think I've showed you we, we, we carry very huge blades very big blades almost machete type buoy knife type uh, blades under our seat because that's if you need to get out uh, that way you have a, you have a very visible very uh, capable weapon to defend yourself uh, the console is a pretty good place as well but the, what I don't like about the console is when I'm trying to get in here it, it's not real conducive for me to, you know, I did exaggerate that, but you get the point, especially when things go south, you don't want to be fighting, uh, trying to, but this, like, like even right here where my wife has this one, you can sheath it or not sheath it, you can have a fixed blade, whatever the case you want to, uh, whatever the case may be, you can have Velcro or a button, you let it, uh, your situation dictate what you carry. A lot of people put them to the front of the seat, kind of like I showed you with the holsters, you can have them uh, 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 up under your steering wheel. You can have them in the front of the seat, uh, but I, I like it you know, right here because nobody sees it. It's in the door. Uh, it, it's not in the way. It's not bulky. It's, it's concealed, uh, but you know, if, if something bad happens, I can reach in here. And this is the knife that we have that we carry in here. Um, it's a fixed blade, very sharp, very capable, uh, stainless, and it's got these uh, like I said, it's all full tang. Uh, it's got these uh, kind of paracord around for the grip. And what I'm telling you is if somebody reaches in here to do you bodily harm and for whatever reason you can't get to your gun or maybe uh, you are going to take your gun on a plane but you already have it back there in you know your flight carry case that's that's the airline has approved and you have to have your ammo separate, your magazine separate, all, you know. So your gun, even though it may be with you, it's not going to be a viable case if somebody reaches in or some, you're, you're at a stop sign and somebody something bad begins to happen i don't care how big they are how strong they are if they reach in to grab you you have this in your hand you don't even have to stab them. you do whatever you want but there's uh i, I don't necessarily train in wing chun little to none but the, you know their, their philosophy is attack what's attacking you and that's not a bad idea so instead of having to try to stab through here literally if they grab you like this you just just like you're peeling an orange or an apple. I mean, you just grab this knife and you begin to twist down their arm uh, in a this kind of a motion with a blade like this, they're gonna let go. And I'm not saying this to be gruesome or mean, uh, but, but, but 
what we care about is you and your family being safe. And it's the same thing. These are very um, easily accessible and whether you're a woman, whether you're a man, these can really come in handy for all ages. Because you know, if you're a single mom or whatever the case may be, or you're a lady out by yourself, to have this right here within reach without having to go through a glove compartment, without having to go through uh, you know, your, your console or whatever the case may be, to have this in your hand, it can really turn the tides uh, in your favor. And these are cheap, they're easy to come by, and like I said, this is solid. I mean, it's not gonna bend, it's not gonna break, and this is razor sharp. I mean, this this is, that point is, and if they're in here on you and you wanna go for the head or the eye or the throat, go for it. But a lot of times people try to reach in and try to drag you out or whatever the case may be. You just uh, give them one of these and, uh, you know, and a lot of times, uh, I'll give you this little tip, point of advice too. I always tell my wife and anybody else for that'll listen. When you're in traffic, at, you know, I think people kind of keep the head on the swivel, whatever the case may be, and they, and they think that's, well, that's just for Walmart parking lots, or that's just at night or whatever. Uh, but here's the thing, when you're in traffic, same thing, you don't know who's gonna jump out. I was literally, I, I never told you this story, but I was in college, and uh, there was a guy, I, mean, he, I don't know if he was on drugs or he was crazy, but he literally had like a big tire iron, a big tire tool, and he would just didn't have a shirt on, and he was talking out of his head, and he was walking around traffic, and people was trying to get around him, and uh, you know, nothing happened. I, I, I drove on around, and I was able to go on past, but you don't want to leave yourself traps, what I'm saying. That situation, I guess they call the law, I don't know. It was in the big towns when I was in college, but uh, you know, that, that could have happened, and what if I was trapped? So what I always try to tell anybody, whether regardless if it's road work, regardless if it's a traffic jam, regardless if it is unfortunately a car wreck, whatever the case may be, leave yourself an out. Don't pull up too close to the car in front of you. Look if there's a median on either side, is there a shoulder? In the event that things begin to go south, um, can I get out? Is there a way of escape? Can I get around? Can I move? You know, uh, because you know things really begin to get ugly you know, traffic laws and, you know, double lanes don't really matter. If you need to evacuate, then you've got to evacuate. But anyway, like I said, I do have, do like the option of having one under the seat, but me being able to pull out that big gigantic knife while driving or in traffic isn't going to be optional. Now, it's going to be great if I have to hike or walk or throw up my backpack, sure. Uh, or if I need to get out and address a situation, sure, I like to wield a big knife. Uh, but like, like in a situation like this, I can't get under here comfortably and get that. So I recommend a knife, something of this size, uh, be able to get to it without any distractions. Like, like I said, not, not having to reach in the back, not having to go to a uh, cubby or under your seat or a glove compartment somewhere it's hard to get to. But literally while I'm talking, I can reach down here and grab this knife and have it in my arsenal. And like I said, if you're going to run it, I would leave, you know, your scenario, if you have a wife or a kid or, uh, you know, your wife may be hauling kids, you may want to have a button or some kind of protection, but if it's just me and I'm traveling, I would just, like a safety on a gun, I would, I'd, I'd leave it ready to go. So either leave that open or if you uh, have a button, go ahead and leave it open where you literally don't have to do anything other than reach over here and you can be looking this way and grab it and have it that quick. So. Please don't misunderstand me. This isn't in place of your gun. This is not instead of your gun. This isn't, uh, uh, you know, I like both. I always like to have both, but in the situation, like I said, where you can't have a gun, a knife is certainly better than nothing. And um, anyway, hope this helps you. I've been, I've been thinking about doing this video a long time. I just want to show you a little bit more, but we're driving, so try to kill two birds with one stone. Uh, we're literally just a, a few days, just two or three days away from Christmas, so. I want to wish you and your family the very best this Christmas, uh, the very best in the new year. May God bless you. Stay safe out there, but something to think about, especially when traveling. We live in a crazy, cruel world, and uh, if things go south, especially like I do, I've got two kids in the back right now, you need to be prepared uh, for a, and have a plan of action in case something does happen because uh, panicking or coming up empty or being unarmed simply isn't an option. So even if you do go to the airport, you still gotta have something coming and going. Even if you do go to a place where guns aren't allowed, you still need to have some means of protection, protecting you and your family. So, and like I said, if you are carrying a gun, still don't have to have, hurt to have a knife or two or three, stage your weapons. I made another video about that. I'm gonna publish hopefully pretty soon. But anyway, wish you and yours the very best. I'm on Instagram, on Facebook, 
would you do me a huge favor? Would you like, share, and subscribe? It means so much to me. It really helps the channel. Appreciate you guys. Thank the world of all of you. Leave your comments in the description below. May God bless you, the Kentucky Patriot. Signing off.